we have two more guests. Uh, one is uh, Edward Termado, that uh, he also has some documentary because he's uh, Christian Armenian, and uh, the other one, uh, as we Iranian says, Hosne uh, Khetam. We will be with uh, Miss Anne Singleton, but let's go to Germany first and be with. Uh, Mr. Termada. Okay, over here. Yes. Mr. Termado, how are you? Thank you, Mr. Sorbi. And sorry being late, and thank you for your patience. No problem. All right, let's. Uh, Mr. Termado, so far we hear, uh, you know, from others that uh, this organization has two faces. One is for outside and showing, you know, uh, what they call it. Uh, human right, uh, ladies right, women's right, and the other one is acting like dictator even for his own member. And since you were one of the member, uh, let's hear uh, from you, because when Mujahideen is criticized, uh, normally it gets some of the member to say they are happy and they have the best life over there in that organization. Uh, what do you think and are they going to get somewhere or they just fooling themselves? Yes, uh, the first I have to say that I was not a member of the Mujahideen, so I was a member of their uh, army. Uh, I'm an uh, Iranian Armenian I was a prisoner of war uh, from the Iran-Iraq war, uh, but I was in the Mujahideen for, two, for 12 years. Now I'm happily married and bringing, my, uh, bringing up my children in the Germany. Uh, it does so that the Mujahideen have members on their television saying they are former prisoner of war. This is because of a BBC report that says the Mujahideen forced hundreds of prisoners of war to join them in the Iraq. Mm. Yes. They use this as disrespecting you, yeah? yeah? Or putting you down, something like that. Yes. Okay. Uh, you said you are not a member and you used to be a prisoner of war because you have been serving Iran army. Uh, please tell us how did the Mujahideen get you to join them? Yes, as I said, I was a prisoner of war for eight years between uh, 90, 1980 and uh, 1988. Uh, I didn't have uh, any political uh, mutation at that time, but uh, uh, then the Mujahideen television program began in Iraq. Uh, and the leaders, Masoud and Maryam Rajavi, talked uh, in uh, very simple and beautiful ways about uh, defending freedom and democracy. They talked about the freedom of uh, expression, freedom of women, freedom of elections, freedom of women, freedom of uh, uh, anything. Uh, freedom of religion and freedom of truth. truth. So you would thought the Mujahideen were helping people of Iran? Uh, it's very lies. Uh, but uh, we didn't know that. And uh, some of the prisoners in Iraqi jails were uh, uh, deceived. Uh, gradually uh, we were uh, 
attracted uh, by this message. Uh, after the ceasefire between Iran and Iraq, hundreds of hundreds of uh, prisoners of war joined the Mujahideen because of this message, including me. Were you happy in Mujahideen? Were you been with them? Were you happy? It's it's it's, it's a joke. <laughs> <laughs> In uh, 1990, after the occupation uh, of the Kuwait by the Saddam Hussein's army, uh, and the Mujahideen was uh, used to suppress the Iraqi courts, it became clear to us that the Mujahideen are Saddam's uh, mercenaries. At that time, Masoud Rajavi had his... Uh, ideological revelation. This was uh, about gaining more control over the members. Raja before all the members to spread, uh, spread from their spouses and then organized forced uh, divorces. In this way, uh, Rajavi turned the Mujahideen into a, a sect and he became a, a dictator. What happened then? Uh, Rajavi said was organized in such a way uh, that no one could uh, criticize the leaders. Rajavi used brainwashing members to force all the members to give up their own interests and to love only himself. Uh, from this time, leaving the sect was forbidden. Uh, forbidden. If someone wanted to leave, they would be punished. The punishment, uh, the punishments uh, became violent. If someone protested. Uh, they would be beaten more uh, and some were uh, imprisoned. The members of the sect were under constant control and uh, no one could talk to each other freely. Uh, anyone who uh, criticized or questioned the Mujahideen or the leaders was called an uh, agent of the Iranian regime. This was this was crazy. <laughs> we were in Iraq in an uh, uh, isolated camp, and uh, we had no contact uh, with the outside world. But Rajavi made upright. Uh, 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 Rajavi made the people afraid. What do you mean? Uh... Why are the members afraid of uh, Rajavi or his organization? All the members are, are afraid of being punished. The Mujahideen in talks about bringing freedom and uh, democracy to Iraq. But inside the said, it is a dictatorship with no freedom and no democracy. But Mujahideen said they are struggling to help the people of Iran. What do you think about this claim? I think uh, Mujahideen has no place among the Iranian people. In fact, Iranians hate this group because they joined the Saddam Hussein in the war. The Iranian people see that the members uh, have become like robots, just following orders. Why, why is this a problem? Uh, the Mujahideen uh, cannot uh, tolerate and uh, criticism. They believe only they are right. After I spoke in the BBC report on the uh, prisoners of war from Iraq who joined the Mujahideen, they brought a few uh, of them to their television to, to, to try to show that they are uh, there by their uh, 
own free will. Uh, there were around one and a half thousands of us. Where are the rest of them? What happened to them? Why isn't the Red Cross allowed to visit them? We need the uh, we need answers to these questions. Is the situation just about the prisoner of war? One of the issues that uh, has be has become very well known in Iran is that the Mujahideen don't allow the, the members to have contact with their families. Uh, they don't allow the families to visit the members, uh, not even in Albania. This is a basic human rights. Uh, every ordinary prisoners are allowed contact with their family. The Mujahideen uh, denies every human right of the members and uh, this cannot continue, I think. Thank you for being with us. I have one personal question because I watched that BBC uh, documentary. How many languages you know? Uh, me? Yeah, I heard you were speaking Armenian with your family and you speak Armenian, Persian. Okay. English, Germany, Arabic, Kurdish. Kurdish. <laughs> wow, and thank you. Thank you so much. Russia, of course. Russia? Because <laughs> my wife is speaking Russian too. Okay. If uh, somebody do a favor and put that link here in Facebook, the one that uh, uh, I was very glad to see and your kids playing in the park and having good time and uh, hopefully others will see and will follow your pattern. Thank you so much. Uh, I thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Sorby, and uh, I hope to see you again. Sure. Thank you so much. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you.